Hi, this is Sarah Noel with Whole and Balanced Life, and today we're going to be making a paleo vegan pizza. So to start out, we're going to make the crust out of cassava flour, which is yucca root. And I got the idea when I went to Mod Pizza on a date night and thinking there's nothing I can eat. They had a cauliflower crust, and I was like, oh, good, but it had eggs in it. So then they said, well, hey, our vegan crust is just cassava flour and sea salt. So I thought I can make this at home. So I start out using the cassava flour and I add some sea salt to it and some dry oregano and I mix it around until it starts becoming a dough consistency that I could squeeze together. This would be easy to do in a food processor until you get little pea sized balls that you can press into a crust. But you know, I'm a pretty casual chef and so I don't really do much measuring. It's all eyeballing and kind of feel and taste. So whatever you like, you just keep adding a little bit of water and of course olive oil. Olive oil is gonna help it have some flavor and texture and it kind of binds since we're not using eggs to bind, kind of helps hold it together better. This is from Italy, this olive oil, and it's pretty good quality, but um, I really prefer Sepe Grove olive oil, which is grown in California, S-E-P-A-Y Grove. You can order it online. It's super delicious and very fresh. This is a Trader Joe's seasoning salt that I decided to add to it. All it is is dry herbs. We've got some garlic and onion and celery and paprika and nutmeg and dry mustard. And so you shake that on just to taste. And then I've got my oregano in there, which is very medicinal and delicious. And this is all great no matter if you're eating vegan or paleo or for me, I'm doing the 90 day thyroid healing protocol from Medical Medium. So this works out great. Next is pressing it onto the pan. Now you can't toss this kind of dough. So you oil up your rolling pin and roll it. Or like I'm doing here, you just kind of spin the pan and push it down with your palm and it helps to oil your hands at this point. But you just kind of keep going around and around until it's the consistency you want. Make sure you oil your pan also so it doesn't stick to it. And you gotta be careful, the edges, if they get too thin, they'll burn. So you wanna make it at kind of a thicker consistency on the edges. But just keep rolling until you get it the way that you want. Turn it and roll it, turn it and roll it, push it down. I don't do anything perfectly. So I kind of resort to just pinching the edges because as you roll it, it kind of gets crumbly and that's when it burns. So I just kind of pull it back and squeeze down to make the edges kind of thick and durable. Once I pinched it down, I kind of got a system of like kind of pushing and spinning and it worked really well. And then once again, I get out the roller and I kind of level it all down so there's no big lumps or highs or lows. Spin it, roll it, tap it. Okay, now we're ready to top it with some marinara sauce. This is some of that leftover marinara that I had for my spaghetti squash. It's delicious. I get it at Trader Joe's. It has the freshest tasting ingredients. No preservatives, just olive oil and herbs and tomatoes. So you just spread it around, spin around, and you're done. Ah, here comes the fun part where I get to top it. I'm using my Norwex scrubber to scrub off this organic zucchini that I got from my neighbor's garden. Slice that up to put it on there. Put as many or as few as you like. This is all up to you what you like. Got some fresh garlic on there, which is just going to be zesty and delicious. Then I'm ripping up some fresh basil to put on there. I always save some after it's cooked so I can have some live basil on top. I love fresh herbs. But in the meanwhile, I'm putting some chopped basil on there and some chopped spinach. And here I have some uh, leftover artichokes from last night. So I'm just pulling out the center part so I can expose the heart of it. And then I'm gonna tear up the heart and sprinkle it around. And this is the best for the thyroid. So this is gonna be a very medicinal, delicious healing pizza. Also throwing in some broccoli. I just have all my produce that I have in the fridge and I'm just throwing everything on it. It's gonna be super delicious. Okay, so after the broccoli is spread around, add some asparagus. <laughs> Let's see what else I've got in my produce drawer. <laughs> asparagus is really good for cleansing too. So sprinkle that on, throw it in the oven. I preheated the oven to 500, and I started out by putting it in for 10 minutes and checking it, and then did it for another 10. Okay, well, I checked on it twice, and um, definitely has like a crunch on it now. Hope I didn't overdo it. It's delicious. A little bit tough though. After I'm done cooking, I like adding some fresh basil. And I just want to say, I really do like the Mod Pizza. They have a lot of good fresh ingredients. Um, so I would visit them. And I encourage them. They said they were going to stop carrying some of the fresh ingredients like cilantro and all these great healing herbs because they turn too quickly. And if they're not used enough, 
they can't afford to keep them in. So more people went and ordered it. Maybe they'd afford to keep them. But anyways, putting some fresh basil, some fresh tomatoes on to give it some live enzymes. Fresh live foods mixed yeah. with the others. It's gonna be delicious like a caprese pizza. Minus the cheese. Okay, it was a little bit tough to go through those tough edges that were crispy. Well, they're kind of good and crunchy, but I can see why they have them thin on the end because it took a little um, force to cut through that. It made a little bit of a mess, but it was really delicious. I love the crunch and the feel of it, and it was so fresh and delicious. Like I could just feel my body going, oh, thank you. It really hit the spot and filled me up after just drinking my juices all day and the tonics. This was like a really substantial meal that was so good. So I suggest making it home or going to Mod Pizza and have fun with it. Put on what you want, experiment with it. One thing that you may or may not like is I only did it for 20 minutes and the center was a little bit soft, but you know, it's just made out of yucca. And so it's okay to undercook it a little and the softness to me made it kind of taste or feel like melted cheese. So it was okay for me. If you've seen my other videos, you know I love using Ziploc bags, and so I portioned them up into leftovers and put them on paper plates, which fit perfectly into the Ziploc bags. You kind of press the air out of it, and then it was a nice little snack for the next day. The benefit of having it undercooked means if I throw it in the toaster oven, because I don't really like using the microwave if I can avoid it, then the toaster oven could cook it a little bit more without burning it because it was slightly undercooked. That's it for today. Special thanks to Mod Pizza for a great idea. And like and subscribe if you want to see more healing recipes.